Hey, y'all, it's your girl, Claudia Jordan, and we are back with TGIF. We're here to spill the tea and break down the biggest headlines in the news and on social media. And later on the show, we are giving you the full on one on all things dating with certified executive matchmaker and dating coach, Jay Lamar. All right, so sit back, relax, and get ready to sip this hot tea. Please welcome Al Reynolds. What's going on, Al? Hey, what's going on, Claudia? Work, 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 schoolwork. Ugh. <laughs> And of course, our special guest co-host of the week, Emmy Award nominee. I'm sorry, Emmy Award winning. My bad. My bad. Winning media personality and artist, T.S. Madison. What's up, Maddie? Hey, Claudia. Girl, hey, I heard you down there buried in your schoolwork, honey, over there at College Hill. <laughs> I wonder if you could take, you think you could pass one of my classes, Claudia? Um, yeah, I do, actually. Because, uh, uh, what I'm doing here is extremely hard and they, um, it's extremely hard, and the university that I'm at is uh, very tough. Like, I'll just leave it at that. But well, uh, I'll tell you like this, if it's extremely hard, honey, and it's tough, I definitely can win. <laughs> <laughs> and Al, I'll go to one of your courses any day. Especially <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure you get an A+. Plus. Thank you, babe. I, being a student, I'm going to tell you, Al, just take it easy with the homework sometimes, because you know what? There's, they want you to be, a, you know, you want to be a well-rounded student, extracurricular activities, family life, drama at work, whatever other stuff you got to deal with in your life. Uh -huh. And all your teachers think it's just about their homework. And it's like, you gave me a stack. You gave me a stack. You gave me a stack. And it's all due tomorrow. Figure it oh, out. Oh, no. You know what's so funny, Claudia? I ask all my students when they take my class at the first class, show me on your phone how many hours you spend on social media because your phone will tell you how much time you spend on Instagram. If they can spend four to six hours on Instagram every day, they can spend an hour redoing my readings. Oh, I, I wish. I wish. <laughs> it was an hour. I got you on that. I wish. It was an hour. <laughs> I've been crying like a few times. Like, I'm tired. Okay, let's get through this and let's have some fun. How's everyone's, how was everybody feeling on this Valentine's Day? Anybody got anything going on in their life or anything? Well, T.S. just got a whole bunch of roses from somebody on her side. I did get some roses. I got some roses. You know, my kids, I have a lot of uh, LBGTQIA, Labiquita kids. And my one of my kids, uh, Jameson, he just gave me some roses for Valentine's Day. I told her, listen, you give me the roses. Your daddy give me the peen. I'm all right with <laughs> that. Oh, my God, daddy. Here we go. <laughs> you getting some peen tonight? Bye-bye. Okay, then. Well, that makes one of us. Ed, what you doing tonight? What you got going on? Hey, look, I'm laying low tonight because I'm trying to get better. But, you know, hopefully this weekend I'm going to celebrate, you know, spend some time enjoying myself and treating myself to Valentine's Day. I told you, Al, I'll come over there and rub that, that coal up out of you. Put some Vicks on, <laughs> on me. <laughs> You're going to make me turn red. <laughs> no dates out here. Uh, I don't even know if I even could, but... Um... This is actually the anniversary of my breakup from last year. Well, actually, tomorrow is. So it's like kind of it's so funny because just the way the planets have lined up and like what's happening, it's an off camera conversation, but I'm in a good place. Let's just put it that way. So anyways, are we drinking right. tonight? Maddie, I see you drinking. Child, I had to drink to your anniversary, your breakup, honey. Uh, <laughs> but I know. Mm. How about he's in town and it's a game tonight? We're in on Louisiana? It. Yes. Wow. And two days ago was in Dallas. I was like, oh my God, but I'm not reaching out. So anyways, I'm good with that. You know, I'm doing a little tequila and orange juice. So let's make this happen. Okay, tequila, while you sick, go ahead and take, make that hotty tie to get that thing about it. That's right. <laughs> okay, well, I got some um, uh, Tito's and Red Bull because I'm going to be up until about 4 a.m. tonight working after we get done with this. So let's get through the show. I know we have a lot of fun stuff, but before we uh, start the show, our very own Al Reynolds was live at the red carpet over the weekend at the 2024 Directors Guild of America Awards. Check this out. What's up, Fox Soul and Soulmates? It's Al Reynolds coming to you live from the 76th Annual Directors Guild Award, and it's Black History Month, so we're going to be covering all things black. What does it feel like to be on the carpet tonight? It feels great. I'm excited. I just joined the union last year. I directed my first episode of television, so I'm very excited. It's humbling. It's humbling. It's immensely gratifying. It's overwhelming. I feel like in our category, there's only ever been two or three black That's women it. nominated. Think of how tough the year was with the strikes, 
It's just awesome for us all to be in the same place again, celebrating each other. It's Black History Month, and we have two black leading males, Jeffrey Wright and Coleman Domingo, who are amazing actors. If you could direct them, what type of project would you create with them? Any project. Well, they are incredibly, incredibly talented. My daughter works uh, on Euphoria, so I'm very aware of his brilliant work. He, he's remarkable, and Jeffrey Wright is an all-time legend. Uh, it's ridiculous, so it'd be an honor to get to work with him. He is the man. I would have loved to direct him. They absolutely deserve to be. If you could choose any director to be directed by, who would it be? Oh, man, there's so many. Shout out to Ava DuVernay. Origins was amazing. Black History Month here in the United States. And to see a man of color, first time out of the gate to be nominated not only for a DGA, but an Oscar is a really significant thing for us here. How does it make, us, make you feel to see that Americans are really behind you and your story and what you're leading with this document? Yeah, we've, uh, we have such immense uh, gr gratitude that we've been welcomed and received and that the story is being recognized. What would you tell that 10-year-old, Sean, given all the experience that you have now? Well, I would tell 10-year-old Sean, first of all, like that burning gut feeling that you need to leave Canada and you got to go chase your dream in the bigs, go. <laughs> go, because A, you might make it. B, that dream you're holding on to, it's as great as you imagine. And that's the life I'm living. All right, folks, so that's it. Signing off from the 76th Annual DGAs. All right, Al, what can you tell us about your experience? Man, it was such an amazing experience. Where else can I work where I can go to work and highlight people that look like me? And I want to thank Fox Soul for giving me the opportunity to cover the DGAs. Because, Claudia, you know this. One of the most influential unions in Hollywood, or you can say guilds in Hollywood, is also the one that's most misrepresented or underrepresented in terms of African Americans, and that's our directors. So in order for us to have equalities, inequalities, qualities address, we have to support our black directors. And by being on that carpet and highlighting them during Black History Month, I felt so proud being able to do that on behalf of Fox Soul. Directors have a key role in choosing the cast, uh, the vision, and the creative aspects that's marketed on film and television. And to know that we can recruit more black people to do that gives us an opportunity to recreate narratives that most are not spoken about, especially with African Americans. Thank you, Fox Soul. And thank you, Claudia, and the team for allowing me to share it here. All yes, right. we're so thank proud of you, Al. And yeah. I was so happy to see you there. And if some of my friends were there. I seen Coleman Domingo. You know, I worked, right. with, I worked with him on Zola and Judd Apatow. Judd Apatow was my boss for like a few months when we worked on the movie Bros. I have a, I had a really good relationship with Judd Apatow. He's a comedy. he's a lot of fun. He's yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah, and um, he stopped. That's the thing. You know, a lot of these people don't stop at your stop at you, especially if you look like us. So the fact that he came directly over and he's the host, my hat goes off to Judd all day, every day. All, all right. right, we will continue celebrating Black excellence here at Fox Soul. So let's get into these topics. Former NFL player Brandon Marshall didn't hold back from spilling the tea about Taylor Swift allegedly kicking Kanye West out of Super Bowl for purchasing tickets right, well, in front of her. He said Kanye was trying to leverage, she said Kanye was trying to leverage her celebrity. Did Taylor overreact or is Kanye harassing her by buying tickets right by her so every time a camera went on her, they would see him? What do you think about this, Al? Well, listen, I 110% believe that Kanye strategically would buy tickets to be seen. That's what he does best. He knows how to create environments to be seen. But I'm not 100% convinced that Taylor Swift had him removed from the stadium. Because think about it, Claudia. If he had her, if she had him removed from the stadium, wouldn't he go on live? He has a $7 million commercial coming up later on in the Super Bowl. Wouldn't he go on live just to create the drama and the mess to get more coverage? So I don't know. I'm still trying to figure it out. And I want to get some inside stories. And I can't believe that Kanye hasn't spoken on it. Because in, in this way, from him not speaking on it, it looks like Taylor Swift is just strong arming him. And that ain't cute in Hollywood. All right, Maddie, what do you think? Yes, I believe it. I believe she called down there to them people like, oh my God, Kanye's here, please get him out of him. I'm like, I'm so tired of him. So like, he does this to me all the time. And I just can't take any more of this. And I just see him out of the spot because, yeah. And they removed his ass immediately and he ain't say nothing. 
And I do believe he bought those tickets to sit right in front of her. I would have to troll her fucking ass. I sure would have. <laughs> oh my God. It's, 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 it. Honey, yes, he did it. And yes, she called. So you I, think she pulled a Karen really mad at you? Think... What, what, what makes you think that she wouldn't? Well, what would, what would make you think that she has the ability to move someone out of their seat who purchased a ticket? Honey, she's Taylor Swift. Mm. Well, anyone that's been paying attention to the media lately, as far they are shoving Taylor Swift down, they are. and in, not in a good way. It is too much, and they are making this. They are making this woman damn near queen of America. And I, I don't know what where this came from, but remember, part of the you know success of her career, the beginning part of her career, where she was like really made famous in our community, was through her affiliation with Kanye West. I'm gonna let you finish, but Beyonce, you know, was she like. I, I think she's always had an ax to, to grind with him, and I think she would stop at nothing. People aren't saying this story is cap. People are saying that it, they don't believe it, but I do think that, uh, yeah, we'll see. Because, you know, Kanye, he might let us know later. He might let mm -hmm. us know later. Maybe he in a mood today, or maybe he's medicated today. I don't really know. But if this happened, you best believe it's going to come out in a song or something, in a rant at some point. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> e. e. Harris said, I wish she had him dragged out by his collar or his two front teeth. Damn. Okay, E. Harris. Well, that's, a, that's a Swifty right there. Jesus. All right. Speaking of Kanye, oh, I thought we were done with him for a while. He keeps popping back on up like a blister. All right. Uh, he spent $7 million for his Yeezy commercial to air during the Super Bowl. However, he filmed the commercial completely on his iPhone using selfie mode. Take a look. Hey y'all, this is Ye, and this is my commercial. And since we spent all the money on the commercial spot, we actually didn't spend any money on the actual commercial. But the idea is, I want you to go to yeezy.com. Mm -hmm. Regardless of uh, what you think of his Super Bowl commercial, Kanye's uh, Yeezy brand made close to $20 million in the 24 hours after the commercial aired. He, listen, you can't take this away from this man knows how to market things. Do you believe Kanye is a marketing genius? Maddie, what you think? Yes, I do. It was short. It was sweet. It was to the point. And while everybody spent billions and trillions on, on the Super Bowl ad, honey, he spent $7 million. Now, the shade is they only put it in certain regions, though. Now that was shady, but I mean, they understand the power that he has by saying, oh my God, go over here and get my, my homeless man shoes at Yeezy.com, you know? So, and, and it worked. You made $20 million. That's right. Okay. Al, what are your thoughts? Hey, you know, as a professor, this is a form of guerrilla marketing called viral marketing and it works, but this is the thing, Claudia, I, I don't know how he made $24 million. I don't know where that report is coming from. I've been trying to get on that website for the last eight hours I get on the website, but I can't purchase anything. So I want to know who are those 24 million people, $24 million people buying $20 items that were able to check out. I can't even select the item on the website. And that's been for eight hours now. So if any soulmates out there have been able to get on and buy anything, put it in the chat. Let us know because I know I've been trying and I haven't been able to. I do know that all the companies that cut ties with Kanye are definitely in a, they're, they're, they're suffering right now. So he's kind of showing in the long run that he is the special sauce for these companies. Hate to say it, but we got to give props and credit where it is due. And he he's doing his thing when it comes to that. All right, 51-year-old retired NBA star and mogul Shaquille O'Neal is facing backlash after making a post stating that female rapper Ice Spice is so damn fine. One user wrote Shaq, she's 24. Another user wrote, Shaq, bro, you got kids older than her. Do you think Shaq's comments were inappropriate or is the internet being outrageous, Maddie? What do you think? Um, well, I Spice is sexy and she is fine. And she been over and she's showing her panties because they're things that she's the best. <laughs> you know, that's what she does. I mean, now nah, I mean it's not like she gonna feel something if Shaq did torture, you know. Ooh. Oh my god, man. <laughs> so, okay, well, yeah, you know, but I mean look, you put you put three hundred, you put three hundred, you put three hundred pounds behind seven inches. You might feel something. Child. <laughs> Not in Maddie land. That's why Shawnee was over there with that man, honey, at the paid $50,000 to that man 
to finally give her a touch on the inside part so she can finally feel something. <laughs> oh, you are messy. But he was, you know, it's the internet. So she, so he's 51, so he can't say she fine. I mean, he is older. That's what all they do, you know? I don't know. Al? Man, you know we love some Shaquille O'Neal over here at TGIF. You know he supported us when we were in Houston at our, our, our meet and greet. I, I, I just admire Shaq. I really do like Shaq. But come on, bro. I got to be honest. This comes across as just a little bit cringy. And the reason why, Shaq, is because we don't look at you like being a cringy type dude. You're like one of our largest American sports heroes. So we always want to have respect for you and think that you are respectful. Now, is this any different than any other 51-year-old man that we see in the club with a 20-some-year-old girl? No. But it's just our expectations are just a tad bit different for you, Shaq. And I know you probably, she was and I know she's sexier in person, so I get where you're coming from. But that's just the sentiment, honestly, coming from a, a person that has admired you all these years, just being honest. I think him saying she's fine is no problem. I don't think there's an issue with that because haven't we all seen, no, you can notice someone that's fine as hell and then also in the next breath say, but they're too young for me, but I wouldn't date them. They are fine. You can acknowledge someone's fine. Now, if he starts sliding her DMs and saying inappropriate, you know, daddy's up to her, that's something else. But I don't know. I she's she's not 18. She's 19. She is 24. She can almost rent a car. Um, <laughs> no problem. So you know, I don't, I don't see it as that bad. But if it was dating her, that's different. But just commenting on looks. Have y'all ever commented on someone's looks that was a lot younger and just was like no acknowledge that they was fine? Where was the comment? Where was the comment placed exactly? Because I thought maybe it was a post. Is it just a a comment? I think it was a com I think it was social media. I because think. you know when somebody like Shaq posts a comment like that, that's basically sliding in your DM. Child, please, she ain't gonna feel nothing, honey. We need to go to the commercial break for Maddie. <laughs> coming up, behave, Maddie. We got a whole week coming up next. Our special guest matchmaker and dating coach Jay Lamar joins us, and later you won't believe why this judge resigned. Keep it here. How you been liking it, Dustin? I love it here. I love sparring with you. I love talking trash with Claudia. TGIF. What y'all drinking on? Buttery Chardonnay, my go-to when it comes to spilling this tea. 1942, baby. It's been a celebration all week. Every weekday. Yeah. Are you going to have any left? How about a big bottle, Al? <laughs> <laughs> How big is it? <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's not be sexually harassing our co-hosts this early in the show. Not saying we won't. It's just going to be this early. <laughs> on Fox Soul. When I got the opportunity to get her, there wasn't no choice. I told myself, I'm going to take custody of my daughter. It's my baby. That's what we're supposed to do as men. Take care of our home, build a foundation, you know what I'm saying? Love, our money. She's my purpose. I'm here to walk with her, hold her hand until she can walk alone. Ain't nothing like being a father in this world. mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn and she wasn't even really sure where she was at it was very unsettling for her i felt so much better after my son told me mom i don't want you to worry or be afraid i'll be there for you and we'll figure it out Welcome back to TGIF. All right, Valentine's Day is often associated with going that extra mile to express your love for your significant other. But what about those who tend to feel excluded from this celebration? Well, tonight we have a special guest who is going to give our single soulmates 
the tea and how to properly navigate through this annual holiday. Please welcome certified dating mat certified executive matchmaker and dating coach Jay Lamar. Hey Jay Lamar, how you feeling tonight? Hey, I'm feeling great, y'all. Happy Love Day. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the show. And I see your shirt is matching the flowers you got behind you. So. Uh, uh, you know. right. Okay, I'm gonna get I, I think I know what I'm talking about a little bit. So uh, okay, <laughs> well, let's get into it. Let's get right, let's dive right in now. Jay Lamar, uh, what inspired you to you know dive into the profession, becoming a certified matchmaker? And how many people have you connected throughout your career, do you think? What inspired me to get into matchmaking and dating coaching was two failed relationships. Um, I was engaged back to back in my early 20s, and I realized that I didn't have the tools necessary to really make those connections work because I wasn't in the business of like uplifting and building up a man, but I wanted to uplift and build other people around me and really help them really figure out what love is. Um, so one day my friend just said, you know what, you should be a dating coach and matchmaker because you're really good at helping people discover self-love and then also helping people figure out what they want in a relationship. And so since then, I've had the opportunity of connecting over 150 plus men in different ways, whether it's via social media, dating events, and through my website. Wow. Now, Jay Lamar, according to reports, approximately 15 million people experience mental health challenges due to loneliness on Valentine's Day. What say you? I say to prevent loneliness on Valentine's Day, you should make it a day of celebration. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate self-love. Celebrate the love that you have for yourself. I think at the end of the day, the best relationship that you truly can have is the relationship you have with yourself. Also, celebrate friendship. Your friends are the people that are going to support you on your journey, whether you're single or in a relationship. Also, celebrate gratitude. Be happy about the blessings that have came into your life. And then celebrate opportunities. We're in February. I'm sure something great has happened to you thus far. And let's celebrate that. And then finally, I think you should celebrate by having a digital detox. What a digital detox is, is take time out, shut your social media, don't go comparing other people's relationships to you being single, but take some time to really meditate with yourself and love on yourself. I think you want to spend more time celebrating today than uh, celebrating today than you spend time uh, comparing. Jay Lamari, we talked about this digital era that we're in. The approach to dating is more widespread than ever because of that. What are the top five spots to meet other singles, in your opinion? Oh, this is a good one. This is what I love. To me, you can definitely meet more people at social events. So dating mixers, uh, uh, networking events. You can meet people wherever you go at social events. Just make sure you keep your eyes on whatever you're doing at that event. Also, coffee shops. Coffee shops is a really, really, really great place to meet people. At coffee shops, you know, everybody's there. Yeah, we're, we can't hear you. Did you did you move your mic? Because yeah, you're giving us some good information. Yes. Hold on one second. <laughs> Honey, that's those love spirits coming in. Claudia's <laughs> 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 love, love spirits. <laughs> you done drop the mic on us. All right, All right there you go. Oh, we can hear you now. Are you guys good? Yes. Yeah. Okay, awesome, awesome. I also say meeting people at coffee shops is a very, very good thing. Because even though people are there working, you could have the opportunity to walk up to them, introduce yourself, maybe even buy somebody a good cup of coffee. Yeah. Gym. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing wrong about nobody some coffee. What's wrong, Maddie? None. You know, that caffeine <laughs> going to send a rush to them. Now, listen, Jay Lamar, right? Now, you mentioned that social media was a place to meet potential booze. Now, let's keep it real. You know it's a whole, whole bunch of creeps in the digital space. Come it on. Is. It is. So what, what are some red, yeah. What are the red flags? So a lot of red flags when it comes to dating somebody on social media is unwilling to FaceTime or unwilling to video chat. If mm. you're dating somebody or talking to somebody for let's say longer than two weeks and those people are not willing to video chat or talk to you um, via FaceTime or video chat, cut it loose. So that means something is up. Also that inconsistent communication. 
if they're not communicating with you the way that you need them to communicate with you, then something isn't really right or they're not interested in the same things that you're interested in. Thirsty for personal information is another one. If somebody is thirsty for your personal information, address, telephone number, things of that nature, mm, sounds kind of scammerish. Uh -uh, I need to know. I need to know where you are, who you are. There is no way that I'm going to link up with you and I don't know. We're living in crazy times. What's your address? What's your phone number? Where your mom and them stay? It's a lot going that, on. I think that that's great after the fact that you guys decide that we're going to link up. But if we're just talking via social media, okay. don't rush into giving people that information because they can, man, they can pull up to your house right. and, and, and be on your porch waiting for you. You know, They won't pull it back, though. They may pull it back, but they won't pull it back. <laughs> Also, somebody asking for financial assistance, do not give out any money via social media or dating apps when you meet somebody. Somebody that's disrespectful or aggressive behaviors, you don't want to deal with somebody that has those type of behaviors because that's going to show you that they're really not in the correct mental space to date. And lastly, uneasy feeling. If you have an uneasy feeling deep down inside that something isn't right, trust your gut and trust your instincts to know but that is not the person for you. Mm -hmm. All right, some great tips from some great tips from you, uh, Jay Lamar. Thank you so much. Now, before we go, uh, we're gonna test out your celebrity matchmaking skills in a fun game we like to call "Shoot Your Shot." Oh boy, let's cue the music. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Lamar. First up, we have Nia Long and three eligible bachelors. We want to get your take on this. Drake, Marlon Wayans, and Cameron. Who should Nia Long shoot her shot with? Well, you know what? Nia Long is a Scorpio. So we know that Scorpios, they keep it spicy and they keep it fun. So I'm going to say Nia Long needs to partner up with Marlon Wayans. Marlon is a Leo, which means that is an undeniable connection. And their vibe and their spice will keep that relationship going because Nia Long needs somebody to support her, love her, and also be passionate towards her dreams. And Marlon Wayans is just the guy for her. Oh. Okay, Jay Lamar. Next, we have Michael B. Jordan and three eligible bachelorettes. All right, we got Chloe Bailey, Regina Hall, and Journey Smollett. Who would you pick for Michael B. Jordan? I would pick Journey Smollett. I think that Michael B. Jordan, who's an Aquarius, is very, very, very outgoing. He needs somebody that also is like very level-headed. And I feel like Journey is very, very, very level-headed. Also, with those two, there's a security that they can provide with each other. And also with Journey being a Libra, she knows how to sometimes take the back seat and let that man lead. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of times in Michael B. Jordan's relationship, he gets with powerful women that don't know how to submit. And with him being an Aquarius, Aquarius men are very, very, very dominant. So he needs to be with a woman that can learn how to take the back seat at times and let them <laughs> let him lead. Mm -hmm. I'm over here burning up, Jay Lamar, because you got me thinking about you matching me with somebody, but this is not about me right now. Right now, we're about <laughs> to talk about Lori Harvey, honey, and three Ooh. eligible bachelors. Coffee Cyril B, Mar Marcus Jordan, and Plow. <laughs> oh. Now this is a good one, y'all, because Lori Harvey is a Capricorn. And you know what's good for a Capricorn? Plies. Plies is a cancer. Plies is fun. Plies is energetic. Plies knows how to love and nurture. And since Maddie, I heard we talked about sex earlier. I think the sex between Lori Harvey and Plies would be dynamic because the sex between a Capricorn and a cancer, woo, you talk about hot. It's steamy, it's passionate, it's careful, and with Plies being a cancer, it's nurturing. And I think that's what Lori Harvey needs moving forward. Oh, okay. I need to put three names out there for me and see who's going <laughs> I, I kind of wish we would be able to do that right now. That We might uh, have you back and, and do that in the near future. Okay, Jay Lamar, yeah. thank you so much. That was a lot of fun, and thanks for your insight and thank your you. great tips. Uh, Jay Lamar, we appreciate you joining us so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate y'all. Thank you. All right, coming up next, J Lo makes a sad announcement that left some people happy. And later, Lil Wayne names his top three female rappers 
Should be interesting. Keep it locked. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear. To jog where we please. To wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. How you been liking it, Dustin? I love it here. I love sparring with you. I love talking trash with Claudia. T-G-I-F. What y'all drinking on? Buttery Chardonnay, my go-to when it comes to spilling this tea. 1942, baby. It's been a celebration all week. Every weekday. Yeah. Are you going to have any left? How about a big bottle, gal? <laughs> How big is it? <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's not be sexually harassing our co-hosts this early in the show. Not saying we won't. It just going to be this early. <laughs> on Fox Soul. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers. The Sisterhood of Women in Tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the Earth. You always want the next generation to have something better than what you had. All right, welcome back to TGIF. Actress and singer Jennifer Lopez told Entertainment Tonight that her next album, This Is Me Now, might be her last album. While fans were saddened, many people were elated. One user tweeted, she started her career off by stealing Ashanti's verses and vocals. Another tweeted, I didn't know she was a singer. <laughs> wow. Another tweet said, Okay. We used to pray for times like this. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, why does J-Lo get so much hate? And are you sad about her possibly retiring from music, Al? Listen, I don't believe it. Honestly, I don't believe it. Did you guys know that J-Lo became the first woman to simultaneously have the number one album and the number one film in the United States all in the same year in 2001? She's been chasing that fame ever since. And I think the only reason she may be, you know, implying that she is going to retire is because this last song hasn't charted. It's actually was a flop. So she may be in her feelings a little bit. And that's why she's taking this project and making it a tabletop like book so that we commemorate her. Right. And I think yeah. all of this is just a ploy to kind of get her back and keep her in the media. In my attention, she is too much of a limelight stalker to ever just walk away from something that she has been doing for over 35 years. Maddie, honey, listen. I ain't even know. The last time I heard J-Lo sing, honey, it was beady, beady, bum, bum. Beady, 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 bum, bum. That's the last time I actually heard her say anything. And she was, she was singing Selena song and she wasn't even Puerto Rican. But this is my thing right here, right? Okay. Just to piggyback off what you said, Al, J-Lo is very much so an attention whore and she loves it. So she did this in order for the people to get to talking about her, you know, to say whatever. Because good press, bad press is just press. You know, and if she retires, will we miss her? We just turn on the Shante. If you want to get a kid, I don't. <laughs> you know, you broke my love won't cost a thing. You, I think people are so mean to J-Lo about this singing. Although that's not her strong suit, I definitely prefer her as an actress. And if anything that helps her focus more on her acting and less on the singing, because some people be, hey, I, I'm okay with it. Thank you. 
time and uh-huh. sorry. Happy Valentine's Day. Oh my God, thank you, John. Oh my God. Oh, hey. Yeah, hey, what is- <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you I know, she's you. one of my favorites. She's one of I my love- favorites, so. Hey, y'all. We'll have you on the show when all this is done, for sure. I know. Listen, y'all have to bring me on me. We got you. Okay. Done. <laughs> all right. Bye, girl. Love love I want to say this to you, Claudia. It is so crazy that the love of your life was going to be a woman. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I, you know I what? Know what Maddie? Maddie, lately, nothing but women been hitting on me. My inbox is flooded with lesbians that are very, very, very good with their words. And they've been really, they've been sending me videos, trying to give me money. It's been crazy. I don't know what energy I'm putting out. But the lesbians are in my DM. They are trying to holler at your girl. Listen, so. this is the this is the this is the season of turning the tides, baby. It's been so many <laughs> lesbians in my inbox since you told them, honey, what you had knew, and they had went and googled me. I was like, girl, this ain't for you. But shoot, you know, I ain't with nobody. I may have to give a woman a try. I may have to be a lesbian for at least a little weeks. nasty lesbian, huh? <laughs> 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 hey, man. Hey. I don't know how much more time we got in this world before World War III comes. So I just say, do what you want to do and have your fun because it's wild times right now. Who knows? All right, y'all. Moving forward, Oklahoma Judge Tracy Soderstrom has resigned after being caught texting the bailiff in court over 500 times during the trial of a toddler that was murdered. Now, the judge was caught on video texting, mocking the prosecutors, laughing, and making jokes during the trial. What do you think of her behavior, and should the bailiff also be disciplined? Al, what do you think? Oh, absolutely. We we learned out that the bailiff is no longer employed there. He's no longer employed in the government in this particular city. But, you know, my, I'm going to say this. Where is the outrage? We should all be outraged because she got to resign. And because she resigned, she's able to now take these practices as a judge and go to a different state. We don't want her in any state because let me tell you something. This is Black History Month, so I'm going to take one second to educate people. Judges are supposed to be the key, the, the, the neutralizer in the fight for civil rights for all citizens that come into that courtroom. When a judge is impartial, when a judge is non when a judge is judgmental, when a judge is, is showing favoritism and making decisions before the verdict is, or is reached by the, um, by the other jury, that judge should not be in that seat. I think we need to examine all her cases. They need to do an investigation of her past cases because I can promise you because of all of this and her violations that she's had, she has not practiced the protection of all civil rights. I want her debarred. I don't want her able to be a judge anymore. This gross negligence should not be allowed, not only just in the state of Oklahoma, which she got thrown out of, but all 49 other states. Maddie, what do you think? I, 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 everything that Al said is, I feel those same sentiments because Listen, I'm a I'm a black trans woman and I've been in the in the system of, of being judged by people who stand on moral clauses and things like that. And I do feel like that she should be uh disbarred. I feel like that all of her previous cases should be tried again because who knows who went to jail or or who knows who, you know, whose lives mm-hmm. she's torn apart based off of her judgment because of, of her feelings some type of way. You know, I, I really think that that she should be disbarred immediately. We don't want her getting no pension or having the ability to go be a judge in some other state. Take it all away from a strip of down. <laughs> and she's gotten caught doing stuff like this. Can you imagine how many times she's done it or she's been biased or swayed things a certain way without getting caught? Mm-hmm. I mean, the first time people get caught doing something is very rarely the first time they did it. And oh, it's a one-time thing. It's a mistake. And the fact that the 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 um the the fate of so many people can lie in the way this in the hands of this woman that can sway the jury either way or think about the case where there wasn't a jury that she just had to make the um the judgment shame on her it's it's beyond um morally wrong i think it's criminally wrong and i think she should be uh, punished you know there should be a law against this mm-hmm. you know there's a, there's no secret all the black kids that were sent to jail because the the judges were in cahoots with the corporations to you know that pipeline of prison get that cheap labor you know, this it's it's just showing us every day that it's really still happening. All right, so keep it locked because coming up next, are you too broke today? And later we are playing a fun game of name that couple. We'll be right back.
My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood. But one day, she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual. And uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn. And she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. Liking it, Dustin. I love it here. I love sparring with you. I love talking trash with Claudia. TGIF. What y'all drinking on? Buttery Chardonnay, my go to when it comes to spilling this tea. 1942, baby. It's been a celebration all week. Every weekday. Yeah. Are you going to have any left? I buy the big bottles, Al. Huh. <laughs> How big is it? <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's not be sexually harassing our co hosts this early in the show. I'm not saying we won't, it's just going to be this early. <laughs> on Fox Soul. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like, he's got to come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with turtle is a perfect day. All right, welcome back to the show. Some people attend uh, T.D. Jake's church to get swallowed up by the word. <laughs> and some people went to Reverend Herbert Miller's church to get as high as the heavens. The pastor was arrested and charged with selling crystal meth out of the church. Do you think God is letting him into the pearly gates? Go ahead, Al. <laughs> okay, so I, I this is new news. I thought he got... I thought he got arrested and it got pulled over by the cops for no insurance, no registration. They found crystal meth and they're assuming that he was possession to sell. But OK, out of the church. That's really low. Isn't that low? Like, and listen, to think that he allegedly went to Yale Divinity School and, and worked in one of the most popular churches in Brooklyn in Park Slope for over 14 years. This is sad. This is sad. Maybe that's why he had to leave and, and relocate, you know, because he was dealing with this drug usage and also this undercover uh, pimp style uh, drug dealer uh, part time. I don't know. This is bad across the board, though. I didn't like it. Maddie. Let me tell you something. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are, is not pleased with the way the people are out here misusing his name and his house. And you ask, was he going to get in the pearly gates? Maybe if he fall down and get on his knees and ask for forgiveness, who knows? But the way that these people are using God's house and God's name and good. just, you know, making people feel all type of way about God. You know, I'm, I'm trans and I don't, you know, really... There's a lot of backlash that I that I get for 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 loving the Lord and being trans and a whole at the same time. And you know, <laughs> but what I don't do is preach to people and misuse God's name and and try to enforce stuff on people. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like I get so tired of people misrepresenting misrepresenting God. And right. he need to go to jail. He in jail now. Well, he's been arrested, but he was let out on bond. Oh, okay. With the church's money? Probably. <laughs> I, agree. I agree with you, Maddie. And we're in crazy times right now. I mean, I guess you could say you can make an argument that, you know, humanity has always been in, in, in dire times or there's always been an issue, you know, that we we're dealing with and that's looming. And I just feel like with all the, the we're in wars and hunger and just inequality, all the stuff that's happening. Do we need to also be disappointed by people that are in the church? Like, don't add to the sorrow. Don't add to the mistrust. We need a place where we can go and be like, all right, you know what? The outside world may be off the chain, but in this house of God, you know, there's not going to be people selling crystal meth or trying to swallow you up or touch you in the 
inappropriate places and all the other stuff that's been going on lately. It's been a lot going on. I just think that's really rotten to mess with people's faith. Faith. I really do. Yeah, I think that's why I say on here all the time when you guys call me the resident Christian that, you know, it's not the pastor. It's not the church house. It's your relationship that you develop with God. I use ministers and pastors and Sunday school and vacation Bible school to teach me the structure of the spirituality. But I don't allow any individual to ever be presented as greater than or, you know, they make no mistakes. You know, that's just not my relationship with God. He's just simply a pastor to me is a conduit. And that's it. And that's why they keep uh, pushing Kim Burrell down. That's why the spirit keep blowing on her. <laughs> those two small shoes on. That's exactly why. Oh, my God. All right. This clip of the Poor Minds podcast is a sure to ruffle some feathers after they recently sat down with Talitha, Talitha Troop to discuss dating and finances, take a look. So if you're making $50,000, don't date. Ooh. Because courtship costs. Okay. Everything costs. Okay. You can go for 22 walks in the park. Eventually, Shorty is going to need a sip of something. She's going to be thirsty. <laughs> this <laughs> bottle of water is $3 in Atlanta. Do these women have a point, Maddie? Well, I mean, there's a lot of things you shouldn't do if you don't have. You shouldn't be dating if you don't have. Um, but money, for me, for me, I feel like that if you if you don't have yourself together in a specific place in your life, you should be more focused on getting your life together instead of trying to start your life with somebody else. You know, get your life in order, get your ducks in a row, you know, line yourself up to get you in a position where you could meet somebody that's compatible for you or you or you don't bring on somebody that you're leeching off or that comes and leeches off you. So they have a point. Okay. Oh, that's bullshit. That's yeah. bullshit. That's bullshit. And I'm calling bullshit when I hear bullshit. This is bullshit, 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 bullshit. And I don't even like these type of conversations. Now, Miss Talithia, you did good because you went viral, but it doesn't make any sense. Sweetheart, I don't even, if you know what black people in America are allowed to make, but we don't even make $50,000. The average income of a black man and a black woman are both less than $50,000. And another thing, if you had use that same analogy are you saying you would have never dated like a denzel washington oh so you would have never dated a bob johnson the first black billionaire because his first job was a mailman or you would never date a steve jobs or a leonardo dicaprio or a larry ellis or a ralph lauren or a tyler perry all these people who are multi-millionaires who you wear their clothes watch their movies and fantasize about their lifestyle used to make less than fifty thousand dollars so you're saying they're off limits come on be real because you're not now let me let me ask you this question because this goes on a lot when the black woman does date that type of man when he's down on his luck uh -huh. when the black woman does date that type of man that she has to help pull him up by his bootstrings when the black woman does date that man that she helps put him through school because he ain't had fifty thousand dollars when he gets up on his feet why does he date a white woman? Why does well, he marry the, a white the ones woman? that I introduced didn't. Denzel Washington has a beautiful black woman, dark okay. brown skinned woman for over 30 years. Here, Bob Johnson, all his all his wives were black women. Sheila Johnson is a renowned uh, real estate mogul and hotelery out in uh, Virginia. And let's not mention Tyler Perry had a beautiful woman that he made a baby with, a black woman at that. So in that case, minute, all Perry three of those being there to bring Tyler Perry up in this <laughs> all for show. But what I'm saying right here and right now is they are anomalies, okay? Now you brought Tyler Perry up in this, honey, it's black history, but don't do that. Now Tyler Perry... Claudia. <laughs> You know that I was for that Claudia, you gonna Al leave me out here? Whole... Claudia, you gonna leave me out here like this? I had that whole speech for Black History Month. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of brothers that you can see. Uh, yeah, hey, listen, what can I say, Maddie? Uh, <laughs> you gonna leave me out here like this, Claudia? A future actress, an actress that could get turned? Come on, Claudia, really? Uh, well, I'm see, I'm 50, right? So at this age, I, it would affect me. Like, it's not really how much money you have because I don't need your money. Like I'm, I'm, I'm a trick. Like I spend money on men. Okay. So I, it's not about that for me. I don't need someone to like, it's not about what they make in their bank account. My thing is your effort, what you're working on. Now, if I saw someone that was in the hungry early stages of their career that I can see going somewhere, 
in my 20s and 30s and 40s, my 20s and 30s, absolutely. I'll rock with you. Even maybe into some of the 40s. But I'm at an age now where I want a soft life. Like I don't want to be, uh, I don't have time for potential. I got, I'm, I'm in the fourth quarter of my life. I think it depends on where you are in, 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 in your journey, in your age. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, $50,000. Um, so let me ask you, honestly, at this age that you're at, if you had a $50,000 man that loved you, mm -hmm. made you feel great, um, could provide everything, be honest, be loyal, not cheat on you, no games, no tricks, you would prefer that over somebody else who runs you through the ringer like the past ones have been? Oh, I'm a dating. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm a dating. Because the day. I'm dating him. He got 50K. He make it 50. I'm a date him because I'm always going to make more than the men that I deal with anyway. Because okay. the, the men that have dated me that had more than me, you know, were tricks. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've, I've definitely dated multimillionaires and I've dated the man that's the blue collar guy. And, and again, the blue collar person did provide more emotional support for me. So, yeah, I would date him. But I'm I also it's a case by case thing. You can't just make a blatant statement because it could be like, what do you mm -hmm. why are you making 50,000? Are you on the verge of, you know, your, 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 your glow up? Are you doing, are you productive? Or are you being lazy and just calling it in? I think it just really depends on that as well. You know? Okay. Cause I done dated, I done had the personal train. I done had the blue collar, I had the broke boy. Hey, me too. Me too. Me too, yeah. Claudia. Me yeah. Too. Me and Maddie, we spend money. Like we spend on these boys. <laughs> That's it. We got money to, you know? Yeah. Al, I'll date you though, because I know how much money you make a year. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on so, through. Come, you know, why don't your job just get it over with and just go date? And go date? <laughs> Please, they're saying in the comments, like, why don't you, Al? Will you take Maddie out? Maddie be throwing that thing at she you. She won't know. have me. She won't have me. I tried to get Maddie to go out with me when she comes no, down. No, 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 no. I can see why someone would turn your ass down and go out because you don't know when to go home. But she said, <laughs> I'm talking about going on a date and then have a beginning time and an like end time. Like a dinner and an end time. Yeah, okay. yeah we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Listen, I see Al in some shorts. Ooh, Jesus. <laughs> you know what? Coming up, we are playing a fun game of name that couple. Is Al and Maddie on that list? Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Scene one, oh, three, take one. I thought we'd be on the same page about this, and we're not. How do I know the way I'm going to respond to it? I want you to get the vaccine, because I want you to be safe. What if you end up in the hospital? That's what I'm scared of. If you was to die, man, that would literally kill me, man. I hug you? Yeah. <laughs> they made you feel that way, bro, I would probably do. I love you, I love you too. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. Freedom, it's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Welcome back. It is February and uh, in honor of Black History Month, let's check out this moment that we love to share with you all, soulmates, sponsored by Nissan. Fox Soul celebrates Black history makers who have broken barriers and created change. Breaking records and blazing a trail for Black women in hip hop, Queen Latifah and Missy Elliott's impact has changed the game for Black women in entertainment. Queen 
Latifah is a rapper, actress, singer, songwriter, film producer, and humanitarian. She was the first rapper to have a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. She's a bona fide entertainment icon with both an Emmy and a Grammy to her name. The Queen recently shattered barriers receiving the prestigious Kennedy Center Honors Award. She was recognized for her groundbreaking influence on hip hop music. During the ceremony, Missy Elliott gave tribute to the Queen's accomplishments and the impact of her song, Ladies First. Standing on the shoulders of Queen Latifah is four-time Grammy Award-winning rapper, singer, songwriter, and producer, Missy Elliott. She has sold over 40 million records worldwide. In 2023, Queen Latifah inducted Missy into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, making Missy Elliott the first female rap artist to join this prestigious club. The achievements of Queen Latifah and Missy Elliott have raised the bar for women in hip hop. They have shown the world what real black girl magic can do. Honoring Black History Month on TGIF, proudly presented by Nissan. Experience a whole new thrill of driving. I love these moments. I love when February comes around every year and we get to do these and really get to get into more of our black history because it did not just it's not just about the down, downtrodden. It's about celebrating. And I love it. All right. What are your thoughts about these two historical moments, Maddie? Well, listen, I love both of the ladies. Um, I, I've had the opportunity to chop it up with Missy Elliott um, and Queen Latifah uh, just a little bit. If I was ever to want to be like any woman as far as career wise, I think uh, Queen Latifah went from rap to talk show host to philanthropist to actress. Like she, her glow up has been amazing. And it's been a journey that I love to watch. And Missy Elliott, honey, she has set the bar in music for so many to follow. I, I love both of those queens. And also, I love the fact that Nissan sponsored them. Honey, ain't nothing like a Nissan. Let me let you know something. Nissan uh, is 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 the queen mother over the Infinity. And I've had many Infinities. They don't break down enough. They're they better than a Toyota. <laughs> I say that all the time. Yes. I'm sorry, Claudia. Maddie, you're right. Nissan, I can't say how, how proud I am for you to be sponsoring here on Fox Soul. In the spectrum that you show, real black female magic is just amazing. We've gone from beauty pageants to referees to now two non-traditional women killing the game in a non-traditional realm where usually only men do it. Nissan, keep doing your thing. The more I learn about your highlights, the more I like you as a brand. Yes. Thames 308 said, loving this commercial. And for our soulmates to say they love a commercial when they are constantly on us and dragging us for turtle. And be, they, well, actually, they love our commercials, but they really love this commercial for its historical impact and meaning and, you know, for giving the ladies props. So thank you very much, Nissan. We appreciate you more than you know. All right. And on our Valentine's Day, we are going to play a fun game of Name That Couple. Oh, shit. We're, I'm bad at these games. <laughs> Let's cue the music. First up, this company is <laughs> always in the headlines defending their brand. Can you name that couple? Oh, yeah, that's Monique and Sydney. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's right, Monique and Sydney. Daddy. Okay, our next couple has been dominating the acting world for decades, and they both attended Yale School of Art. Can you guess this dynamic couple? Angela Bassett went to Yale and so did her husband. That's where they met. Yep, that's those two right there. Angela Bassett and um, Courtney, Vance. Courtney Vance. Am I right? Yay! Yeah. All right. This next couple met on the set of a series, Soul Food, as co stars. Can you name this beautiful couple? Oh, Boris and Nicole. That's right. I they like Boris. They are gorgeous. German. He was born in Germany. <laughs> Good old German man. Ooh. All right. Our last couple tends to receive backlash for displaying their love, not only privately, but publicly. Can you guess this couple? Bobby and Whitney. Oh, close, but Whitney's not that tall. Um, Who is that? Give me another hint, Claudia. Uh, she taller than him. <laughs> is oh. she, like, give me, what, what, what job does he have or she have? My contact's oh. dirty. I can't they, see. Yeah, they didn't tell me. Who is that? I don't, I don't know. They're at the Billboard, so that's music. Is he the artist or is she the artist? Sports. Oh, that's sports. sports. Think sports. Um, 
Is that Sierra? Oh yeah, she's t she is taller. Oh, All that right, is Sierra. Sierra okay. Oh, oh, that oh, one was I tough. Thought, well, I thought that was Whitney Houston about a, the leg and the. I don't know, child. Yeah, it does look like Whitney, but remember, yeah, no. she's not taller than Bobby. Oh, All right, well, that was a lot of that. fun, y'all. Hey, I want to thank my fantastic co-hosts, Al Reynolds and T.S. Madison, for joining me tonight. Thank you so much for watching us on YouTube. And once again, Soulmates, we appreciate it when you go back and re-watch our show the very next day and hit that like button yeah. and uh, show, show your favorite show some love. Stay tuned for Fox Soul Face Up. We'll see you back here tomorrow and let y'all know if Al and Maddie went out. <laughs> Have a good night, Soulmates. Good night, y'all.